Hey everyone, welcome back to the Crazy Dreamer Network. My name is AJ, and if you want to hop right into the reading, definitely go down to the description box for your poll selection. But brief announcements, everyone. I do have personal readings now open, okay? So if you're interested in a personal reading, the, my email will be in the description box below. You email me and then I will send you uh, my Calendly link so you can book your reading as soon as possible, okay? So again, let's hop into the reading. This reading is going to be what life lessons are you mastering right now, okay? So in this moment, what life lessons are you mastering? We have four piles. Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. Pile number one, we have the card 16, all that glitters with the rose quartz, crystal ball. Pile number two, we have card number eight, community with the argonite crystal. Pile number three, we have card 23 with peace with the opal light star. And pile number four, we have card 20 with imagine. And we have the unikite crystal. Okay. So again, we have pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. I love you all so much, my dreamy dreamers, and I'll see you in your reading. Bye. Hey, pile number ones, welcome back to your reading. So you all chose the Rose Quartz Crystal Ball along with card number 16, All That Glitters. So pile number one, you, it's interesting because I just within pulling your cards at the first glance of like the first couple cards, I knew exactly what you were mastering, okay? Um, I feel as if you are mastering self-sufficiency and self-love through and through. Uh, you are mastering self-sufficiency through releasing and relinquishing codependency. And not just in a romantic sense, but in an overall sense. I feel like you're more reliant on yourself. I feel like you are more truthful. You are more clear in, in your discernment with people, places, and things in your life. And you realize, like this card suggests, all that glitters isn't gold, right? So let's say, for example, you know, maybe you've been single for a while and, you know, you go on Instagram and it seems as if everyone is getting together, everyone is, you know, with someone or is currently like in a relationship and you're not. And I feel like in the past that maybe would have made you rethink or, you know, question your self-worth. But I, I feel like now, pile number ones, you are like, not all that glitters is gold. So not all that I'm being shown is as it seems. And you have that clarity. You know, you are able to weed out of the anxiety, which is a trap, and you are able to see things for what they are. And I really have a sense that you have really freed yourself from codependency and you're very self-sufficient and you're very grounded in self, okay? I do want to read to you this card from the guidebook just because I think it's pretty cool to get different interpretations on what you know the person who's reading at the time which is me might have to um say about you know this depiction and what the author who took their you know precious time uh to write this out so i just want to share with you all this so let's see we have card number 16. Okay, so it says all that glitters. It says essential meanings. A need to see beyond the superficial, the desire to don a mask or dress something up to disguise its true nature, trying to be something you're not, chasing after every sparkle, sparkly new thing, being mercurial. Very interesting, the being mercurial, because that to me, that's like being very 
mental, like very in your head, very nine of swords, so to speak. Okay. So it says the Oracle's message. It says it's only human to want to adorn oneself in trinkets, trinkets and paint a pretty picture of oneself. It's natural to want to acquire the trappings of status or to deny them as a statement of rebellion. But if it sparkles, is it better? Whether it's a fast car, a big house, a title or position, the stamp of authority or the sparkling of diamonds, these icons let you know something about a person, place or thing. Or do they? The truth is that people seek to acquire things because of what they will do for them and how they symbolically will elevate them and make them more attractive. This card signals that it's time to see beyond the adornments and probe underneath the surface. Learn to recognize the mask people wear and the motives underlying them. Imagine that all the glitter is gone. Would you still desire the person or the object? Okay, so yeah, exactly. I feel like you are cutting through the BS right now, and this is a key integral um, moment in your life that you have mastered, pile number one. You can, I feel like you could even have uh, some clairvoyance about you, and you understand intrinsically that what you see isn't always what you get, right? So with the devil and the ace of swords literally being smacked out in the center of your reading, I have a feeling that you have had this victory of clarity as it pertains to superficiality, as it pertains to the material world, as it pertains to seeing beyond this three dimensional plane of existence, which is usually right smoke and mirrors, which is usually adorned with excess entertainment and fluff to really kind of like hide the truth of what's actually going on. All right. So I digress. Let's move on to, uh, to your reading pile. Number ones, we have at the bottom of the deck, the nine of swords. And like I was suggesting, you know, you could have, um, been experiencing like this type of dark night of the soul or something like that. But I have a feeling that you're, it's almost like you're gaining this power, this strength, this uh, newfound superpower that, you know, you have this fundamental understanding of going beyond the veil, of going beyond the cloak, okay? And I feel like at so sometimes because of this extrasensory perception that you have within you, you might have trouble sleeping sometimes or have trouble cutting through certain anxieties that just aren't yours that are almost like being you being a conduit of other people's feelings but i have a feeling that you're cutting through that right now you're learning this lesson that you don't have to take on the world's anxiety okay as long as you tend to your own garden as voltaire says cultivate your own garden you are going to be more than fine you're actually going to create this new um almost like I wanted to say this new identity per se in which by you weeding through the drama by you weeding through the chaos and other people's anxiety and not attaching it to yourself making it your own you're giving permission for others to do the same thing you know what I'm saying uh, especially I feel like women more so you know people who identify as females people who uh you know go through life um, as you know, kind of like in their female principle tend to have this thing with like, you know, we all wear masks, right? We just do on our day to day just to get through the day. Right. But I feel like women or those who identify as women tend to feel like they have to put on this mask of like pleasing, right? Being, being a people pleaser more than the people who identify as men or the people who are in their more masculine energy. They don't feel the need to have to people please. This is something that society has ingrained in women for far too long. And I feel like what that means is tending to everyone else's garden before women or women, ident people who identify as women or people who identify more in their feminine aspect 
aspect uh, tend to do for themselves, right? They tend everyone else's garden, make sure everyone else is okay before they do their own. But I have a feeling, Paul, number one, you're relinquishing that. You're relinquishing that role. You're relinquishing that identity. And not to say that you're relinquishing the identity of uh, your feminine traits or your feminine aspects, but you're starting to rely more on yourself, tending your own garden, catering to yourself more so now than you ever have before. And I think that's going to best serve you because you're not wearing this cloak or this mask where you feel like everyone else needs to be served before yourself, okay? And I feel like you're gaining a lot more clarity just in life, a lot more abundance that comes with this too as well, okay? So let's list off your cards, pile number one. We have the six of pentacles, the nine of pentacles, the devil. We have the seven of wands, the magician, the queen of wands, the empress, ace of swords, eight of swords, and then we have the ten of pentacles. Like I suggested in the center of this reading with the devil and the ace of swords, I feel like you're cutting through the BS right now as it pertains to you allowing other people's energy or dare I say anxiety latch on to you, bind you to this self restriction, right? Especially here with the devil. I have a feeling you're overcoming um, obsessive tendencies. You're overcoming uh, rumination, right? Depressive tendencies right now because you know why? For the first time, either in a long time or ever, you are putting yourself first. You're putting yourself above everyone else, okay? Um, and not in a not in a selfish way, no, in a selfless way. You understand that first your needs need to be met. You need to be filled up to capacity before you are able to help or fill anybody else's cup up, okay? You have to be filled up first. You, uh, you understand this fundamentally, pile number ones, now. And this is the lesson that you are mastering right now, okay? And you know how I know you're mastering this? And I, I know I'm kind of jumping over, but we have the Nine of Pentacles and the Empress. Do you know that the Nine of Pentacles is the precursor to the Empress, okay? The Nine of Pentacles um, is literally... I mean, the, the Empress is an upgrade from the Nine of Pentacles. These two cards are related, as you could probably very well so see, okay? So you are definitely upgrading uh, yourself and your self-worth by putting yourself first, by p placing yourself on this pedestal and not in like a, a pompous way or anything like that. No, in a self-deserving way. I don't know if you all have ever heard of the saying, we don't get the love we want, we get the love we think we deserve. And that doesn't just uh, go for love, that goes for everything else, pile number ones, and you're finally understanding that, okay? So going back to the beginning of your reading with the Six of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands, you won't tolerate anything else than reciprocation now you're you, because of that self-sufficiency that you have planted within you you've planted these seeds they are grown okay and this is why you have mastered this with the six of pentacles and the queen of wands you understand how much abundance you have in your heart and in your physical and you understand what you're bringing quote unquote to the table what you can offer to someone okay you're very confident in that with this queen of wands you not only uh are able to get the job done but you look good doing it pile number ones and someone else is gonna have to come j with that same energy if they expect to be in your life and to um benefit from your energy right they have to have matching energy they or, or better at this point you can no longer dumb yourself down or, or make yourself smaller or shrink any longer to um, meet someone where they're at. No, they have to meet you where you're at. And that's where this Empress energy lies. That's where this pedestal lies. You have understood that, you know what? It pays the cost to be the boss, so to speak, right? 
in a very soft way and you understand that you're no longer cowering down or diminishing yourself to meet people where they're at but they have to meet you where you're at now pile number ones and this is a lesson that you're mastering okay you're no longer just you know playing small you're no longer playing small. With this seven of wands and this eight of swords here, you're standing up for yourself. You're standing up for yourself and your mental health, your mental wherewithal, because you understand how far you've come and how much further you have to go. And you're releasing yourself from this self-imprisonment of the mind. Okay? You are. I feel like these were anxieties about yourself and self-limiting uh, beliefs and behaviors that you uh, had to fight against, you know, you had to um, create boundaries within yourself, okay, that took you a while to do. With the magician and the ten of pentacles, you are establishing something. You are establishing concreteness. And when I say that, I mean with the magician and the pentacles, you are making manifest, okay? You are um, transforming not just your life, but the life of others around you. There is a lot of abundance coming in for you, pile number ones. And this is why you're mastering this lesson. It's so interesting because as soon as I said that, I just realized this. You're about to be, you are about to be loaded and you have mastered this lesson in the best timing because you finally realize once all this abundance comes in all that glitters is in gold it, it takes consistency it takes worth it takes wherewithal it takes optimization as a person to keep this up and just because you have all this doesn't mean it can't be gone tomorrow so you have to make sure that your mental health that your physical health that all is in alignment with you as as much as it can be you know what i'm saying at all times if you can muster up that you know what i'm saying we're human so yes we're gonna have the time so where we're not feeling our best and you know we kind of like you know aren't doing our best but more times than not you will be and you realize like I said earlier, it pays the cost to be the boss. All this abundance, it isn't just, it doesn't just poof manifest out of nowhere. It takes time. And like I said, concreteness. And with this magician and this 10 of pentacles, you're making manifest the life of your dreams, everything that you've ever wanted, but it, there's no free lunch. It doesn't come without a, a price, right? And that could be the price of your time. That could be the price that your time is so valuable. You can't spend it on everyone, especially on people who it's going to leave you depleted and not benefiting out of the situation. It has to be of mutual consensus and a mutual rapport. And I have a feeling you're understanding this more and more and more. The people who you're going to be hanging out with from now on or giving your time and your energy to is the people that you get time and energy from. It's not going to be, um, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but a zero sum game a zero sum gain where you're just not getting anything in the process or this you know what i'm saying it has to be reciprocal and this is what i'm feeling like this is the major lesson that you're learning right now is um you know you are so self-sufficient right now uh and you have relinquished codependency to the point where people have to meet you where you're at you're no longer going to play small or dumb yourself down to meet people where they're at they have to either meet you at your vibration or they have to be better than you to a certain degree, if that makes sense. Like be doing more, uh, be more driven or something. And, and then because then that would offer that would encourage you to continue with your growth and development. And that would even help with this person um, knowing that them being in your life is beneficial and you being in their life is beneficial as well okay so let's pull some more cards pile number ones clear concise accurate messages spirit what else does our pile number ones need to know what life lessons are they mastering right now card number four firm foundation you're building a foundation you're building this empire brick by brick pile number ones okay it's like you've traversed the mountain, you've made it to the other side. 
And now you see things objectively for what they are. And people have to, you know what I'm saying? You're no longer just giving, giving, giving. It has to be reciprocal. And if it's not, it's cool. You don't feel any other ways about it, but you just know in your heart of hearts that the person or the people or the circumstances that you're going to be given to, they're going to give to you. It's not, that's not going to be up for discussion or debate from here on out. Tell us more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages. What life lessons are pile number ones currently mastering? And you know what's interesting, pile number ones? I'm looking at this devil card here and I think this is the sign of Saturn. You, I don't, I don't know if Saturn is in retrograde right now, but a lot of you could be ending your Saturn return. Okay. And I think your Saturn return happens for a couple years. Like once you hit 29, so you could either be entering or ending this Saturn return, but don't quote me on that. Just kind of look up the Saturn return, but I was getting that inclination. Like y'all could be cut ending this Saturn return. And this is why a lot of clarity is coming out. You know, the hard, the dog days are over. The hard days are coming to an end and you're realizing your worth because you've established something of value for yourself and for others. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Tell us more. Clear, concise, accurate messages. A lot of abundance is coming in though, for real. What lessons are pile number ones mastering right now? Look at this. You can't make this up. Card number nine, material harvest. Whatever you're building or have built, keep going because you're about to, who child, you are about to receive a lot of abundance. So much so you could take care of yourself and you could even help others with more to spare. You could be living a luxury, you're going to be living a luxurious lifestyle pile number ones and that's why you have been on this road to development and self-improvement because with that nine of pentacles and that empress card there's like no doubt in my mind how you're going to be living okay and with that with that being said this is why you're working on your your personality, your character, so to speak. You're developing more and more your character because you know that all that glitters isn't gold. You know, even if you got the car of your dreams tomorrow, if you got a mansion in the hills or wherever you want to live tomorrow, there's work that comes with that. So it humbles you at the same time, pile number one. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't change who you are, but it magnifies who you are. So you know if you want to remain this humble, beautiful individual that you have grown accustomed to being and that you want to be treated right and um, be treated with reciprocal energy, that uh, you have to continue to hone this craft of developing yourself. Tell us more, spirit. What? Life lessons are pile number ones currently mastering at this time. Look at this. We have card number four, the heart chakra. And then we have card number two, the waiting game. I feel like you've waited for this a very long time and now it's coming and your heart is open. I feel like you're open. You've healed a lot of heart chakra wounds. This could have been inner child wounds and things of that nature. And I feel like once this heart chakra was healed, the heart chakra is the bridge from the lower chakras to the upper chakras. And once this heart chakra was mended and healed, it allowed for all of your chakras, the, at least the ones going down the spinal cord, right? Which is the seven chakras. Uh, it allowed for those chakras to be in alignment. And now that you are in alignment and you're experiencing this alignment, now you're able to master this life lesson of self-sufficiency and relinquishing codependency. Okay. Let's pull some more cards. Tell us more. Oh, you know what? I do want to use this Black Moon Astrology deck. Tell us more, Spirit. Ooh. Hold on. These just kind of fell out. I don't want to take these right now. Tell us more, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number ones. What are pile number ones? What are the life lesson? 
pile number ones are currently mastering? What life lesson is pile number ones currently mastering right now, Spirit? Clear, concise, accurate messages. For some reason, I just got you don't take things as personally as you used to either. Tell me more, Spirit. Clear, concise. Because you know that all that glitters is in gold. You know everybody's going through something. It's not just you. So you just don't take things to heart how you used to. And I felt like that's also healing in and of itself. Tell us more, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number ones. What life lesson are they currently mastering at this time? Clear, concise, accurate messages. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to take all these. So we have Virgo. I analyzed card number 18. I think I... Did I just say something about Virgo? But we all... Well, I don't know if we all know, but the Nine of Swords represents Virgo in the tarot, and it's also mercurial energy, okay? Which this... All that glitters card was saying in the... Um, the author's description in the guidebook mercurial energy thinking too much being over analytical i have a feeling you're triumphing over this okay this could have been as it pertained to a virgo maybe you had to heal something you know from a virgo there is a lot of earth energy as here as well so this could have been something you were dealing with uh, involving a Virgo and I think it's interesting because we have card number 18 one and eight and then that's nine and then this is card number nine so I feel like you are eliminating over analyzing things okay I feel like your health is doing really good at this time as well look at this you can't make this up you cannot make this up I just turned y'all seen those three cards I just turned them around and Ooh, child. Anyways, card number three, Mercury Mind. Yeah, you're healing. And look at the Mercury Mind card is green and so, so is this heart chakra. You have healed and mastered um, traversing overthinking, being too over analytical, being too obsessive in your head. Card number 24, Pisces. I believe you could also be dealing with the Pisces right now, okay? Or uh, a lot of you guys could be Virgos. A lot of you guys could be Pisces or have a lot of these uh, signs highly aspected in your chart. But I feel like you're coming more into the belief and knowing of who you are. You understand that life goes in cycles, okay? And we have card number 51, Mercury Retrograde Reinvention. Whoa. We have Mercury like twice. We were we were just talking about mercurial energy just through this oracle card alone. It's, it's fascinating to me. So long story short, pile number ones, I feel like you're traversing mercurial energy. You're traversing being overly mental, overly in the mind. And I feel like you're starting to feel more grounded is what I will say in who you are. I think I mentioned that earlier too. You're feeling more grounded in who you're becoming and, and loving yourself more and more because of belief. I have a feeling you have a lot of belief in yourself with this Pisces, I believe card. And you know, you're about to, you're about to be in this reinvention stage. And those who are not contributing to your well-being, they got to go. They got to go, <laughs> pile number ones. And you're, you're realizing that. And it's not in like this pompous, like arrogant way. I feel like you're just, you want to reward people for loving you and being in your life and giving you good energy by doing the same thing to them you know what i'm saying and not having people who didn't do that in your life now especially when all this abundance and this well-being starts to ramp up if it hasn't already we have at the bottom of the deck card number 40 water element sensing and i feel like you've been sensing this change this reinvention of yourself for a very long time you're getting what you asked for you know and you have to realize, look, I'm taking off the mask of being this people pleaser because look, all that glitters isn't gold. And once I come into this abundance or when this abundance starts rolling in how I want to, I don't want the wrong people to be by my side. So let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. What other... Um 
what life lessons are pile number one's mastering right now? Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number ones. What life lessons are they currently mastering right now? Look, we have pay attention. We have forgiveness. Let's pull one more card. Tell us more, spirit. <laughs> what life lessons? And I feel like you're paying attention to who you let in now. Because you know where you're going. And you, you know how far you've come and you know where you're going. This was at the bottom of the deck and it just... Uh, flipped out about that life yeah you're about that life and you're paying attention to people now more than ever you know what i'm saying look protect yourself you're protecting yourself at all costs i have a feeling you have forgiven the people who might have slighted you in the past or didn't wish you well or things of that nature but now you you're forgiving and you're just letting go doesn't mean you have to you know eat with them or you know have them have a seat at your table no you forgive them and then you move forward because you're about that life you're about to experience the beauties in life and you're paying more attention to uh you know things that serve you versus things that don't all in all tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages for our pile number ones what life lesson are they currently learning are they currently mastering? We have dreams incubation. I've been feeling been in incubation for a while now because your dreams are about to come true. I have a feeling like even dreams that you've had, they could um, be premonitions. They could be coming true, okay? Footprints, directions, you're being guided right now. God's spirit source energy is carrying you through this, okay? And you're being, you could be giving... You, you could be given directions in your dreams, pile number one. So pay attention to your dreams, right? Pay attention to your dreams right now because they could be setting you up for success. They could be giving you directions on what you need to do. And we have lots chance. Maybe you're about to take a chance on someone or something that could really be beneficial for you in your life. And, you know, maybe this is why all this abundance is showing up for you. We have at the bottom of the deck coins abundance. Like, you can't make this up. You really cannot. It's, it's still trippy. As long as I've been doing readings on YouTube and personal readings, I'm still flabbergasted when certain messages are just that much more solidified it's 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 very interesting okay let's see i want to let's get some goddess guidance cards pile number ones to conclude your reading sorry let's see Okay, so thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for giving pile number one's clear, concise, accurate messages. Last messages for our pile number one's advice, guidance, and wisdom, Spirit, for our pile number one's. <laughs> okay, cool. So we have Sar. Sara Sabati, the arts, express yourself through creative activities. I feel like you're doing this more and more. And I feel like this is where a lot of this abundance is coming from or through the abundance that you're gaining right now, you're able to express your individuality through singing, through dancing, through um, instrumentation, playing a certain instrument. Maybe you like the guitar. Maybe you like the flute. Maybe you like the saxophone, you know, maybe you like making beats on, you know, your garage band or something like that. I feel like you're rediscovering what brings you passion right now. And I feel like it, that's going to help to continue your developing that character that you want to project into the world, pile number ones. Would Freya bold unleash your adventurous side? Take risks, risk and be daring. This is literally what you're doing right now. This is really beautiful energy. Um, but yeah, and I feel like through this, through you establishing these boundaries with people and you establishing clear boundaries with them, I have a feeling um, 
this is going to allow your heart to open more so you can become more creative. There's a lot of feminine energy as well. And uh, I feel like you're just living your life to the best. Like you're living your best life right now, pile number one. So with that being said, my lovely dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. What a beautiful reading, like literally a beautiful reading. It was almost a little perfect okay but those are the life lessons you are now mastering i love you so much my pile number ones if you like this message if you like this reading please give this reading a big thumbs up like share and subscribe share this content with loved ones family friends or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in our next readings. Bye. Hey, Paul number twos, welcome back to your reading. So you all chose card number eight. If I could grab it. <laughs> you all chose card number eight with community as well as this Argonite crystal. So what the Argonite crystal does is really cut to the truth of the matter and allows you to have a little bit more freedom with self-expression, okay? It's also good for, uh, I think it's a good stone for public speaking and getting your points across, okay? So as it pertains to card number eight with community, uh, the life lesson that you are mastering, you know, it's funny when I was doing the pre-shuffle, what came to mind was your network is your net worth, right? So basically it's not always what you know, but who you know. And I have a feeling that the life lessons that you're mastering is just that your net worth, your network, excuse me, is your net worth and how uh, you being able to develop, not only develop, but to leverage relationships with people in your community, okay, um, will help you in the long run. And I have a feeling that you have come to understand this more and more and more as the days go by, okay? Uh, whether you all have a business, whether you're self-employed or whether you are working for a company or you have a career in a company or a corporation, whatever it is, if you're an entrepreneur, I have a feeling that you are starting to understand that the people you surround yourself with um, really constitutes who you become as you gain more recognition or more momentum in whatever it is that you're trying to do or achieve in life, right? It's almost like that saying you are the, you're basically the sum of the five people you surround yourself with, right? Uh, so I, I just feel like, A, you're mastering yourself, uh, but you're mastering yourself through your net work through your net yeah your network right the people who you the people who you might be more closely aligned to now the people who are going to help you in the future that could be your friends or your family uh as a community right you leveraging relationships with the people you're the closest to just because you know i think it just makes sense to you at this point in time in your life you know what i'm saying um but yeah so long story short pile number one pile number twos, I feel like the life lesson that you're learning is, um, uh, excuse me, the life lesson that you're mastering is that of community, but that of self as well and building up a community that could also be, uh, an integral part of the life lesson that you're learning simultaneously. Okay. But let's hop into your reading. Oh yeah. I did want to read to you a little bit of this community card just to give you a grander scope of, uh, what we're talking about here. Okay. So let's see. We have card number eight with community. It says essential meanings, belonging, being seen and understood by others, like-minded connections, a sense of family and friendship, knowing your place in the world, okay? So it says the Oracle's message. This card signals a new affiliation with a group. Humans are social creatures and we need to know we are useful to our families and communities. In a community, everyone has an important function and feels I matter. Membership in the group provides a sense of belonging, of kinship, and of 
purpose that comes from working together for the greater fulfillment of all. Perhaps you are part of a spiritual community or an artistic one. Perhaps you are in a learning community where you share your love of education. Regardless of its form or focus, your community brings you joy. You will be inspired by it and want to contribute to it. Your contribution may be as small as showing up or as large as becoming its leader. No matter your position in the group, your presence is needed. So pile number two, alongside of that message, I feel like you're mastering leadership in your community. I feel like people from your community could come to you for your guidance and your expertise, okay? Or whatever it is that you have to offer to this said community, all right? But again, let's hop into your reading. We have at the bottom of the deck, the page of pentacles. I also have a feeling you have mastered learning. You have mastered the apprenticeship. You have mastered a, uh, a, an integral thing to which that's why people come to you for your guidance because it's almost like you have surpassed just this apprenticeship mode. Although I have a feeling that you are always in a perpetual state of learning in a perpetual state of apprenticeship, you're a forever student, but it's almost like the cycle, the student becomes the master and back again. But because you're a forever student, you understand that it's cyclic. You understand that there's gonna be certain things that you don't know and that you have to at least attain some knowledge in um, and then, you know, become the master again and then become the student and vice versa. It's an it's a never ending cycle, right? Of the of master and then the student. And it's interesting because, because we have the page of pentacles here and then we have the king of pentacles in the center of your reading. So you're becoming more self-sufficient, more autonomous, more a, of a leader to an empire, which is in essence to a community, right? That you're building, that you're establishing. And this could also be in business, right? This could be business relationships, a business community, business rapport. It doesn't have to be take it if it resonates, but um, um, this could be along those lines, all right? So I digress. Let's list off your cards. We have the High Priestess, Six of Wands, the Emperor, Six of Swords, Seven of Cups. We have the Knight of Cups, the King of Swords, King of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the Ace of Cups. Like I was saying in the center of your reading with the Emperor and the King of Pentacles, you're mastering self-sufficiency through, this could be a, a business endeavor that you have or through a career, okay? So maybe you're just, you know, wanting to rise up the ranks in your career. Maybe this is at your company or in your job or something along that nature or even master to a degree the financial world, right? Your material world, okay? Okay, you want to get on top of things and become so self-sufficient like you are the bank, so to speak. I don't know why I'm getting that like you're the bank, you know, it's like you have so much financial standing and grace that it's like you create your own money. You create your own economy, so to speak. Pile number twos. OK, and people might come to you and ask you for loans or ask you, how did you do this? How did you build this up like this? Can you teach me? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like because you've mastered a certain degree of maybe the financial world or just business in general. OK, there's a lot of cards that signify business and prospering in business. OK, we have the emperor, the king of swords and the king of pentacles. Yeah, shrewd business person, pile number two. And even if you aren't, you are mastering communication skills to an ability that you could learn this in a heartbeat because you're able to communicate it. Right. So going back to the beginning of your reading with the High Priestess and the Knight of Cups, you're also mastering the wisdom of what you're passionate about, the wisdom of loving, the wisdom of, of, of caring and kindness and being charming to me is what I'm getting as well, which really helps in your community because you're a, it's funny because I'm getting like you have this wisdom of smoothing people of winning them over like the knight of cups the knight of cups is a very charming individual so I have a feeling that has been within you that is ingrained in you and it's almost like this kind of like 
secret weapon that you pull out is your charmingness, like that charm that you provide in any given situation or like when you're in a community setting to where you got to kind of amp it up a notch, right? It's almost like it's innate in you with the high priestess, okay? And it's almost like people might not see that. People are like wondering, what is this air? What is this air about them that I can't pinpoint, but it's, it's so intoxicating you know what i'm saying this is this charm this fluidity you know that you're able to turn on and off you know when the time is right with the six of wands and the king of swords i feel like the le life lesson that you're mastering right now pile number two is that of the throat chakra you're winning you know you're on top right now or you're about to be right people see the victory the people in your community more so see these victories that you're having because it seems like you're very poignant you're very clear and concise you have a very clear and objective point of view about life because you know where you're going where you've been and where you're you you know where you are where you've been and where you're headed you're very clear and you're very um you don't mince your words you you do what you say and you, you say what you mean and you mean what you say with the king of swords here and i feel like this is what 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 keeps you winning this is what keeps you winning because you don't forsake yourself you don't turn your back on yourself you're very clear concise and to the point and you're also very educated here with this king of swords because this king of swords is very cerebral it's very intelligent it, you know has a keen for the intellect okay and they cut through the malarks they cut through the malarkey pile number twos okay and this is the person you're becoming in your community this authority okay whether it be with business whether it be with your finances okay you're becoming an authority in your community and that's what you are mastering a sense of self okay and i feel like even with this authoritative air about you you're still charming you're still kind you're still amicable you know what I'm saying? You're not, you know, you can communicate well. With the Six of Swords and the Ace of Wands, what I'm getting is that, you know, you're moving to calmer water, so you're able to find your passions. You're able to reignite your inspirations, and you're also able to reignite the inspirations of others in your community. You could be a public speaker or something like that. You could be someone on the world stage or wanting to get on the world stage, and you're mastering that brick by brick, right? especially with the Six of Wands and this King of Swords. The King of Swords is a strategist of communication. They know very clear and concisely how to get their point across without being long-winded or things of that nature, okay? But you're, you, I feel like you are able to take people's minds and reassure them and reinvigorate their passions because you've mastered doing that within yourself first. And this could be your career of choice and that's why you've mastered it because you now teach people how to do it as a career or something like that with the seven of cups and the ace of cups i feel like um there's a you've been pouring a lot into yourself so there's going to be a lot of options this could be in love too a lot of options in love coming in for you okay choose wisely is definitely what i'm getting but there could be a, a lot of options in love just because of your air your aura that mystique about you that you have mastered in some way shape or form pile number twos um but let's pull some more cards tell me more spirit clear concise accurate messages for our pile number twos what life lesson are they currently mastering right now Ooh. okay are these three cards i'm just gonna take them we have card number nine spiritual strength yeah you're resilient you just keep going like you don't let life it's like <laughs> you don't let life get the best of you you get the best of what life has to offer and because your spiritual team is always guiding you because of your resiliency because you're able to weather the storm it's almost like 
they they're telling we've got your back you don't ever have to worry about anything just keep going we got you we're gonna carry you through this you know um we have card number one prosperity begins yeah you're building something concrete to where it's going to offer not just you but your community a lot of prosperity and i feel like you've mastered that to a certain extent card number six victory and success like we have the six of wands here again with the six of wands I feel like you are ushering in this prosperity, right? You're calling it in with your tr with your trumpet, so to speak. <laughs> and then we have card number 17, hope. This card number 17 to me signifies a star card. So a lot of the things that you've been wanting, wishing for, praying for, they're on their way. You're calling it in through your resilience, pile number twos. And God spirit source energy is saying that they got you. Just keep going and they're gonna take care of the rest. We have at the bottom of the deck, card number three, solar plexus chakra. You have a lot of power. Like I was saying, that authority figure, a lot of power. You're confident in yourself. And a lot of, you're able to back up your talk, right? And that comes through confidence. But you know where a lot of confidence stems from is through experience and tr and triumphing over adversity, okay? Once, when we feel like we've accomplished certain things over and over again it builds our confidence it builds our spiritual strength it builds our endurance so you're not just feeling this confidence for no reason you've built it through this empire or this uh leverage you're building with your community and um it's going to show up materially for you if it hasn't already pile number two is going to very soon okay so let's pull some more cards <sighs> clear concise accurate messages spirit what life lessons are being mastered by our pile number twos right now clear concise accurate messages for our pile number twos what life lessons are they mastering currently okay i want to pull this card we have card number 16 cancer i feel so I have a feeling you have mastered your emotions to a certain degree, and that's what's brought you to this uh, authority position that you're in right now with the uh, cancer I feel. And moving forward also, not letting life get the best of you, but you getting the best out of life, pile number twos. Tell us more, Spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number twos. What life lessons? Okay, these fell out. Are they currently mastering? We have card number 31 with seventh house partners. And we have card number 25, first house, the body. I want to pull one more card. One more card. Spirit, what life lessons are pile number twos currently um, mastering? You know what? I feel like cards... The, I'm just going to keep these three cards, okay? So with Cancer, I feel card number 16, card number 31, seventh house partners, and card number 25, first house, the body. I feel like you are now mastering how important it is to build up that network that I was telling you about. Look at what's at the bottom of the deck. We have card number 35, 11th house friends, right? Um, I believe Libra rules the seventh house. Please don't. I'm, let me pull out this guidebook because I'm not sure, but I think they do because I know Libras kind of rule partnerships, right? Um, and as it pertains to that, I have a feeling that you understand sometimes not what you know, but who you know. You can have amassed uh, so much amount of knowledge, but if you don't know the right people who can maybe connect you with this and that person to be able to best... Um, express your talents or your expertise it's like how, well how are how are you gonna be able to do that right we have things like youtube and stuff like that but even as it pertains to youtube uh being in partnerships being with sponsorships right uh collaborating with people that's going to help you to continue to climb up that ladder of success right or whatever you deem as success wherever it is that you want to go so i feel like partnerships are very keen at this time and you're mastering them you're mastering the art of being in affiliation with certain people so you can leverage the relationships that you have spent 
your precious time building and not just for yourself it's going to be a mutual benefit for you and the other person right and with 25 first house body i feel like this leadership role you could be the leader of your community or be amassing that um those leaders that leadership capability those leadership roles that your community might need at this time people might really look to you for leadership right now pile number twos and also you could be understanding that a strong body enables a strong mind i'll say that it helps a strong mind right i feel like you have a strong mind and if your body's not you know in tip top where you want it to be or whatever you could still have a strong mind but through strength training through uh physicality yeah you build resilience in your muscles but you also build the resilience to keep going so you can see those external changes right as it pertains to physicality. So let's say you're strength training because you want to tone or you want to build muscle or whatever it is that you're doing in the gym or outside or whatever, you're doing that. But on top of just doing that for the external results, you're going to by like by nature, right? So like simultaneously be experiencing those internal results because doing something anything that you do repetitively is going to create grooves in the brain to help you to continue that habit right so i want to read a little bit of card number 31 which is seventh house just so i could see if yeah it's it's libra okay so it says it says, okay, so it says, card number 31, marriage is neither heaven nor hell. It's simply purgatory, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. It says, bindings, whether emotional and domestic or lawful, and what is right or permissible are now indicated. It says, the seventh house is the area of the chart that represents the other. And it says, since it is, oppo says, since it is opposed, since it is opposed the first house of the self, Am I saying that right? Opposed? Yeah. Okay, the first house of the self, traditionally, it has been thought to be the house of marriage and marriage partner. Okay, so you also could be getting married, <laughs> pile number two, which I don't see the four wands or the lovers, but you could be joining in partnerships like a commitment, like a legal binding relationship, which still applies it still has everything to do with um connections and and growth and network right because if we think about legally speaking a marriage is a contract and a marriage depending on who you're marrying could really work for you or you know put it however you fit it right but certain marriages depending on who you're marriage marrying who you're marrying could work for you uh if, if that's your plan right what the heck i'm trying to see if um it doesn't say much about libras in here but i am skimming it <clears throat> so long story short I know the corresponding card to this is Justice, which is Libra in the Rider right Way Tarot. So it could be, you know, you guys let me know down in the comments because I'm not an astrologer by any means, but I, I am trying to learn more about astrology because I'm, I'm highly into it, as you could probably see. But anyways, I digress. Let's pull some more cards, my lovely dreamy dreamers. Let's see what's going on. Tell us more, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number twos. What life lessons are they currently mastering at this time, spirit? Thank you. Thank you. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number twos. What life lessons are they currently mastering at this time? Okay, let's see what these two cards are. Invest in yourself. And we have have faith. So you're definitely investing in yourself and not just yourself, your community right now. Let's pull one more card. Tell us more, Spirit. And I feel like you are very faithful in your convictions. You know that um, 
you know, what you give is what you get. So you're investing in yourself and you're investing in your community just how you would want others to invest in you, right? Healer, this could be your profession, the healing arts, okay? Whether it be physical healing or whether it be emotional or spiritual healing, people might come to you um, for that expertise, right? And then we have like attracts like, that's beautiful. And I feel like you are gravitating. Ooh, what did it say about community? I think it's literally said like attracts like. I have to, let's see. What is this card number eight? Like-minded connections. Yeah, like attracts like. That This is where you're going towards. So you're going towards like-minded connections right now. Even if that if that's a, a potential spouse, if that's, you know, just community in and of itself, you're attracting the people who are more like you than ever before, okay? And we have clear your energy. So I feel like you might help people to clean up their energy. Okay, so sorry, pile number twos, I'm back. So yes, long story short, I feel like you could help others and really talk to them to solidify them clearing or cleansing their energy, okay? So with that being said, let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God, thank you, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages. What? Tell us, spirit, pile number two, what life lessons are they currently mastering right now, spirit? <laughs> Y'all just should see the cards that just came out. Hold on. Okay. So we have Augury with Master, with Mastery, excuse me. So you're literally, this is just a confirmation to this reading, how much you're mastering your craft so to speak, alongside with building networks through your community, right? I Ching change, you know? I feel like you're changing so much. Like this, you wouldn't be able to identify the person that you are now versus who you used to be. Oh, wow. So look, we have Ouija board caution, and then we have a fortune cookie fortuitous. Yeah, you're coming into a very opulent and fortuitous time. It's like you have the Midas touch. Whatever you touch turns to gold. And the Ouija board caution, I just feel like make sure that with change, you know, um, you're mastering yourself. So y'all might want to check out pile number one because I feel like there could be a message there with growth and as it pertains to the circle that you keep, right? Granted, yes, you're all about networking. You're all about building and leveraging relationships. However, it's the right ones, right? It's that seven of cups. Choose wisely because you're going to be having a lot of people and, you know, and, and choose your thoughts wisely too because like attracts like, right? So if you're thinking healthy thoughts, if you're thinking creative, positive, uh, opulent thoughts, those are going to be the people who are going to come into your life. So make sure that you're very conscientious and you're taking per cautions of your own mentality and uh the mentality of the people who are going to be around you from here on out because i have a feeling pile number two is you're very focused at this time you know your direction you have a sense of direction you know where you're going okay so yeah let's pull some goddess guidance oracle cards to conclude your reading pile number twos thank you god thank you spirit for blessing me, I mean, for blessing me and pile number twos with clear, concise, accurate messages, advice, guidance, and wisdom for our pile number twos in regards to the life lessons they are currently mastering. Life lessons pile number twos are currently mastering guidance, wisdom, and advice for our pile number two spirit. Guidance, wisdom, and advice for our power number twos. Ooh, look, sheesh. Two cars came out in the nick of time. So we have Isol, Isol, Ice, Isolot. <laughs> Hold on. They have the pronunciation of this goddess in here. I gotta see it because I have no idea how to pronounce this goddess's name. Okay, let's see. The pronunciation is I-Zolt, I-Zolt. 
Eisolt, okay? So it says, the love you have shared is eternal regardless of the situation. It says, messages from Eisolt. When it comes to matters of the heart, your help is here. It's all around you and also inside you. Your inner wisdom may seem quieted by any pain that you feel, yet be assured that the healing you're undergoing is swift and efficient, and you truly are healing from the inside out. First, your heart must heal from its grief, loneliness, and any feelings of betrayal. This can take some time, so be patient with yourself. Treat others as you would an ailing person with caution. And we have caution right here. That's interesting. Sorry, let me show y'all. We have caution right here. So it says, with caution, gentleness, and tenderness. Next, get yourself out into the world. This is what we're talking about, establishing relationships. Uh, not in a harsh fashion, but with outings to parks, forests, and such, which are essential to lightening your outlook. Nature is a great healer, you see. That's why I'm frequently amidst the flowers and the trees. Although they may seem quiet on the outside, they're quite talkative when you breathe and simply ingest their magical tones in conversation. Spend time among the forests and the trees as well as the plants and the animals and you'll regain your foothold upon this planet. You'll revive your sense of spirit and your desire to tread among the living once again. I promise you that your heart will mend and that you'll also help others in this fashion along the way. This is what we're talking about with the healer energy. And it's interesting, pile number twos, I think, you know, if you're interested in pile number one, definitely go check it out. But if not, it's okay. Um, it says various meanings of this card love from your romantic partner is eternal regardless of outward appearances it says you're healing from a breakup you're healing from some other type of loss let go of an old relationship to make room for a new one the love that you send into this world is an important part of your divine purpose your deceased loved one is happy and send you love okay so now we have era cura with blossoming, you are just getting started. So have patience with yourself in the process and do not give up. This is basically what this reading was suggesting this whole time. I wanna read Arakira. So it says, messages from Arakira. In many ways, you are like a flower bud who is ripe and ready to open and grow. Don't try to rush this process as it's a part of your beautiful path. Enjoy learning new and knowledge, new knowledge and skills. Take your time to gather new ideas, nurture your body in plenty of fresh air, sunshine, water, and healthful food. Soon enough, you'll get the unmistakable sign that it's time to put your learning into action. Spend time among flowers or work with flower essence and oils to support your growth process it says various meanings of this card it says slow down have patience get involved with gardening use aromatherapy and or flower essence keep the faith hold on was this okay look keep the faith and I feel like that's like your forte, like that's a part of your mantra as well, pile number two, is you have faith, you know? You believe in yourself, you know? And you believe in others, and that's why a lot of people come to you to seek your advice and your counsel and your wisdom, okay, my dreamy dreamers? So, beautiful message, uh, pile number two. Amazing way to... Um, to develop into yourself and to really master the art of connecting with people, especially in and around your community. Okay, so with that being said, I love you so much, my dreamy dreamers. If you like this reading, if it resonated with you, please give this reading a big thumbs up. Like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone else who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, I love you so much, dreamy dreamers, and I'll see you in our next readings. Bye. Hey, pile number threes. Welcome back to your reading. So you all chose card number 23 with peace alongside this opal light star okay let me i wish i had better lighting in here y'all so you could see how pretty this opal light is but yeah with this opal light star so the life lesson that you're mastering right now is the art of manifestation through peace through equ equanimity through balance right i feel like you're offering yourself the peace that you have always wanted at this time and thus doing that is enabling so many manifestations and wishes to be fulfilled that you've 
been wanting for a while now, okay? So without further ado, I want to read a little bit from the Wisdom of the Oracle Guidebook about this message. So let's see. Here we go. So we have card number 23 with peace. It says essential meetings, freedom from attachment, radical acceptance. It says the Oracle's message. It doesn't get any better than this. A quiet mind, a heart fulfilled, freedom from want and the soul satisfaction. The way to peace is through radical acceptance. Everything in your world is exactly as it should be. Harmony is beautiful. Enjoy it. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. You're mastering the art of manifestation because do you know the quickest way to obtain something that you have been wanting to manifest is through the law, the, um, the path of least resistance. And what's the path of path of least resistance, radical acceptance, accepting what is in the moment, being at peace with yourself, with what you have, uh, with uh, being in a perpetual state of gratitude, which also contributes to peace, is, you know, in fact, manifesting the life of your dreams, okay? So I digress. Let's get into the reading. We have at the bottom of the deck, the nine of cups. Again, another confirmation, pile number three, is that you are literally manifesting the, uh, you are literally <laughs> mastering the art of manifestation through peace, through contentment, through being satisfied with what you have, thus showing God, spirit, source, energy that you are ready to attain more. I th think it's also interesting that we have the nine of cups and the ten of cups in the same deck. So, like, you're you feel this contentment. It's like the feeling is a secret and this feeling of contentment and peace and peace of mind and, you know, emotional equilibrium that's at play here is allowing things to be brought into your existence, almost at the drop of a dime, at the snap of a finger, pile number three. Okay. So let's move forward with your reading. We have the 10 of cups, king of pentacles, the star, we have the death card, queen of cups, page of wands, page of cups. We have a lot of pages here, these two pages. So there's new beginning in action and in something emotional as well. We have the six of swords, the seven of pentacles and judgment going, starting from the center of your reading with the star card and the six of swords, your mind is really at peace, pile number three. And if you aren't experiencing this yet, you will be, you're entering a state of calm. Okay. I feel like you're leaving turbulent times and going into smoother waters, thus creating this wish fulfillment pile. Number three is, ooh, yeah, I I'm, thrown for a loop here. Okay. You've healed yourself. You've healed your mind. You know, I'm getting that 10 song. Uh, what is that song called? <laughs> free, free mind. I think it's called free mind. Yeah. That 10 song free mind. Like that's y'all's vibe right now. If you don't know who the artist Tim it Tim's is, she's like, I think a Nigerian artist from Africa and she's real popular nowadays. I think Justin Bieber did like a rendition of her song with this uh this producer called um what is that song called essence i think and anyways she's kind of ventured off into her own thing and she has a song called free mind and it's so beautiful and this is what i'm getting from your reading like you're freeing your mind to be able to ma manifest this life of your dreams right now okay and that's what you're mastering this freedom of mind this freedom of expression this peace that you're finding within yourself that you're giving to yourself at this point in time pile number threes okay so going back to the beginning of your reading with the ten of cups and the page of wands you're taking this adventure, this almost like this emotional adventure, okay? Because you have this peak, you've reached this peak of contentment. You've reached this peak of um, self-fulfillment, this emotional fulfillment. I feel like it's giving you the courage to go for, go for something epic here with the Page of Wands, okay? 
You could be getting a message from a fire sign, uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, doesn't have to be, but you could be getting this message from a younger person or a positive message that's going to ensure this emotional fulfillment, okay? With the King of Pentacles and the Page of Cups, I feel like you're keeping a lot of the things that are pertaining to your external life, your material life, very lighthearted right now, okay? You could be getting a lot of uh, downloads and a lot of intuitive hits about what how you can best build your life moving forward on this material plane of existence and how you can become this king of pentacles right having the wisdom uh and the sh and being able to ex ex execute and in excellence is what i'm trying to say execute in excellence what you want on this material plane of existence right with this king of pentacles here uh building that empire building that business building that uh that legacy but you're also moving in lightheartedness you want to do so but not at the cost of your health not at the cost of your peace of mind right and this is why you're making sure that you carry this page of cups energy this lighthearted, uh almost like i wanted to say flimsy but i don't think that's the right word um this just this carefree uh attitude with how you build your empire because you don't want that empire or that legacy to be weighted down with the harshities of the world it's almost like you want to provide it as a means of peace for others and not just yourself uh you know a piece uh you want to provide it as a peace for a place of peace for others excuse me as well as for yourself with the death card and the seven of pentacles i have a feeling that you're also uh been mastering contemplating letting certain things go certain things that just no longer serve or that it's time to release or it's time to transmute i feel like you have you're usually in a state of contemplation on whether or not you should just let certain things fall at the wayside or not but now i feel like you're just you know you want to invest in yourself and anything that isn't investing in you can go pile number threes with the queen of cups and the judgment card yes i feel like finally you are putting yourself at the forefront of your life and this is why you're finding this peace you have discerned finding that self-love that holy grail right because that's what the queen of cups is holding in their hands the holy grail of self-love and self-attainment and i feel like maybe this is being brought to you through an archangel this could be archangel michael or whoever you uh relate to an archangel michael figure or an essence in your life you're being revived through this self-love you're being it's like you're saving yourself you're saving yourself you're giving yourself this peace pile number threes okay and you know that's the life lesson that you're mastering nobody else is gonna give it to you unless you give it to yourself first okay or they could give it to you but it won't be sustainable you're sustaining this piece basically for the rest of your life okay Maya Angelou Maya Angelou has a quote that says you have to have a place within you that is left that is left remain unscathed from the world so you can go back to that place every single day if you have to to recharge but you have to keep something in yourself that is so pure that's so left unscathed by this world uh and that is your inner peace that you're creating that inner resilience and inner peace that you are not letting anybody affect okay tell us more spirit life lessons being mastered from pile number threes what life lessons are being mastered right now through pile number threes look card number three recognition and reward take a bow you deserve this round of applause pile number three Whew, you can't make it up uh card number one prosperity begins tell us more spirit what else is pile number three's uh life lesson being um mastered here and we have passion ignited yeah you're reigniting your flame you're saving yourself you're giving yourself that peace okay <laughs> we have card number five with throat chakra i feel like you are able to communicate to others also the peace that you need okay 
and maybe that's putting yourself first and i also feel like you're giving yourself the recognition and reward that you need you're not waiting for others to hand it over to you okay you're giving yourself that recognition and reward and i feel like god spirit source energy your spirit guides are actually uh, wanting to give you a congratulations and recognition for you finally at at obtaining attaining this self the self realization of peace that you're giving to yourself on a consistent basis now pile number threes so let's pull some more cards thank you god thank you spirit clear concise accurate messages it's funny because we have the peace card 23 we have card number three and then we have one one which is two i just saw that so i have to <laughs> point it out tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages for our pile number threes life lessons that are being mastered from our pile number threes by our pile number threes excuse me life lessons being mastered by our pile number threes right now spirit life lessons being mastered by our pile number threes right now let's see Ooh, card number seven jupiter abundance yeah you're claiming the right to your abundance you are mastering the art of manifestation pile number three through radical acceptance, through the path of least resistance, through this inner peace that you have so very well obtained. Jupiter is applauding you. This is who's giving God's God spirit, of course, first and foremost. But the other attributes who wants to applaud you and, and come in and send their congratulations and stuff is the, the planet Jupiter right now. Tell us more through all this abundance and opulence you're, you're maintaining or you're about to obtain. Tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages about pile number three's life lessons that they're currently mastering what life lessons are pile number three is currently mastering look at this this is beautiful card number one sun spirit look god spirit source energy has come to say celebrate it's your time it's your time to shine right now pile number threes Oof more spirit one more card clear concise accurate messages what lesson life lesson is pile number uh three is currently mastering card number 25 first house the body yeah leadership representation you being able to represent yourself okay through god through source through spirit through your higher consciousness and and knowing at all times god is your supply and the universe the universe is an abundant universe and God is always going to supply you with the things that you need from this universe because you have this fundamental understanding that you have mastered that God, spirit, source, energy is your unwavering supply. And with that being said, nothing is outside of your grasp. Nothing that you want, nothing that's physical or that's, you know, material is outside of your grasp, especially right now. We have at the bottom of the deck card number 12, Black Moon Lilith Mystery. So I feel like this could almost come as a surprise to you. You know, this could kind of be lurking in the, the shadows, so to speak, this abundance that's about to, that's about to come your way because you found this inner peace, this inner resolve. OK. Tell us more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. L life lessons that pile number three is currently mastering. Life lessons pile number three is currently mastering spirit. Ooh, that's trippy. Look, let that ish go. You've done that. The path of least resistance. You're not letting anyone or anything steal your peace anymore. It doesn't matter. It matters not, pile number three. Tell us more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages from our pile number three, life lessons that they're mastering. Healthy habits. I feel like you're taking more care of your body. You're eating better. You're fueling your body better. That's also contributing to your peace of mind is through good sustenance that you are putting into your body and the lack of uh, BS that you have taken out of your diet or your regimen. Tell me more, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Pile number threes. What life lessons are they currently mastering? I f I'm feeling like you're letting go of a lot of um, 
unhealthy habits. Look, clear your energy. Yeah. I feel like you're clear, you're cleansing your energy through putting good food, good sustenance in your body. You don't overdo things. You're letting things kind of roll off your shoulders, so to speak, right? And that's clearing your energy. You're maintaining a good chi, a good aura. You're expressing yourself, okay? Or you're maybe being, um, being, um, suggested to start expressing yourself now that you found this uh, newfound clarity through healthy habits okay and letting go of the things that no longer serve you tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages for our pile number threes what life lessons are they currently mastering right now we have the will of fortune with fate okay you're on top of the will now you're on top of your luck you're in control of your destiny okay pile number threes and you're mastering your fate you are the captain of the sh you are the captain of your ship the master of your fate okay tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages for our pile number threes what life lessons are they currently mastering look we have lots with chance you taking calculated and assess you taking calculated and assessing the risk but you have taken risk because you know high risk, high reward, right? So you've taken ch a chance on yourself and that's giving you a sense of peace too because you're not always going through in your mind, I should have did this, I should have did that. You've already done it. You've already taken that chance on yourself. So that's why I'm getting God's spirit source energy really wants to applaud you. And we have smoke prayers. Your prayers are being answered because you are now being ushered into the path of least resistance. And you're finally trusting yourself because you have the inner peace and wherewithal to do that, to trust yourself, to trust in the guidance that you're getting when you're getting it, pile number threes. Congratulations. Look at this. Look what's at the bottom of the deck. Mastery. Augur, mastery. Another confirmation that you're mastering this plane of existence. You're mastering the art of manifestation. Whew. Okay, my lovely dreamy dreamers, pile number three, let's end your reading with goddess guidance oracle cards. Just one card, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Advice, guidance, and wisdom. Life lesson. What's the most key life lesson that pile number threes are currently mastering. Clear, concise, accurate guidance, advice, and wisdom for the life lesson that pile number three is currently mastering. Okay, God says, I want them to know, I want them to have two cards. So we have Rhiannon with Sorceress. You are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. Like, I'm flabbergasted. Pile number threes. My head. <laughs> it, it speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. The art of manifestation. Mm, mm, mm. I gotta repeat this. Rhiannon, sorceress. You are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Infinite supply. What did I say? Oh my goodness. We have Sedna, infinite supply. You are supplied for today and all of your tomorrows. You are supplied for today and all of your, your tomorrows. I hope y'all can read this because I'm shooketh. I'm shooketh. We have at the bottom of the deck, Guinevere, true love. The romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love to you. So whether you're manifesting love, whether you're manifesting abundance, whether you're manifesting infinite supply or just the magic to manifest it all, pile number threes, confirmation on confirmation on confirmation you have mastered the art of manifestations my dear wow just whew, incredible all right so pile number threes with that being said i love you all so much my dreamy dreamers just chef's kiss job well done standing o round of applause okay um if you like this reading if it resonated with you please give this reading a big thumbs up like share and subscribe share this content with loved ones family friends or anyone else who would best benefit from the messages provided here today again my dreamy dreamers i love you so much and until next time i'll see you in your next reading bye hey pile number fours welcome back to your reading so let's hop right into it 
Y'all chose card number 20 with Imagine and the Unikite crystal, okay? So we'll get to the crystal in a moment, but the current life lessons that you're mastering right now, pile number four, to me is <clears throat> completion through the imagination. So what I mean by that is almost like living in the end as a once very world-renowned thought leader, Neville Goddard would suggest, living in the end. So <clears throat> basically the fulfillment of wishes, right? The fulfillment of your intended goals through living it first in the mind, right? So let's let's delve deeper on that just real quick because I do want to read out of the guidebook, uh, the author's interpretation of the wisdom of the oracle card, which is this card. Um, I do want to read their interpretation also, but as it pertains to just me channeling this message for y'all, is that um, yeah, you're living you you have mastered the art to a certain degree of living in the end, right? So what living in the end means is basically, certain people call it fake it till you make it, others would just call it like embodying uh, who you want to be, right? Embodying, personifying where you see yourself or who you want to be, right? Living in that truth of that now, and then almost like shifting timelines into it, like, you know, as time progresses, if that makes any sense, y'all. So again, like, I feel like y'all are also entering these portals into realms in which, in which you had only dreamt of, okay? Some of you all are entering these portals from dreams that you've had in the past and like those dreams are coming to fruition it's almost like you're living in that dream life or that dream state that you've always wanted um the number 20 could be pertinent to some of you all but uh, i digress i want to read out of the guidebook from the wisdom of the oracle so let's see So we have card number 20, imagine. It says essential meanings, turning imagination into manifestation, creative thought, visualization, the power of aligning imagery and feelings, creativity, illusions. Very interesting as well, pile number four, but we'll, we'll delve into it. So again, it says the Oracle's message. Who do you want to be? Who do you need to believe in in order to have yeah, who do you need to believe in order to have the life you want? You are gifted with the power of imagination. If you can dream it, you can create it. This is the time when your imagination is the key to manifesting the life you desire. Spend time daydreaming, fashioning a vision board to help you see your goals or meditating. Allow the power of your creativity to deliver images of what feeds your soul. Then allow your feelings to mingle with your inspirations and imagine these things being real right now. That's pretty much what I just said, part number four. Then repeat, what you imagine will, will become your belief and soon you will see these things come to pass in the outer world as if by magic. Wow. So what a beautiful representation of the art that you're currently mastering right now, right? So you all choosing this Unikite Jasper crystal is an indication that your heart and your mind are coming into harmonious balance right now. So because of that, I feel like because of like this certainty that's guiding you to an extent, that is also compounding into what you're currently mastering right now, pile number fours. With the justice and the queen of wands being in the center of the reading, you're not only making manifest through your imagination, but you're putting inspired action at the forefront, right? With the justice card here, you might have um, found more alignment into balancing your life, like really becoming balanced in the approach that you seek as well as taking action, right? So that's the heart and the mind together alongside you taking action pile number four you know, that those are the realms in which you're mastering um, right now, okay? So 
I digress, let's hop back into your reading. Pile number four, we have at the bottom of the deck, judgment. Okay, so I feel like you are being judged accordingly to, you know, your vision. That's it. You know, it's almost like God's spirit source energy wants to give you a leg up, okay, or a standing ovation right now, wanting to rise you back, nurse you back to health, nurse you back to this vision that you've seen for yourself. And in doing so, you're feeling more inspired, you're feeling more alive, you're feeling more compelled to take inspired action, okay, alongside with what makes your heart sing and your mind flourish, okay? <clears throat> so let's list off your cards. We have the star, four of wands, justice, the seven of cups. We have the 10 of wands, ace of swords, king of wands, queen of wands, the moon, and the ace of wands. Also, one thing, pile number four, that I did want to bring to your awareness is we have a lot of illusion cards here, right? Even this imagine card, as it's stated in the guidebook, has something to do with illusion. And I feel like you're cutting through the muck of illusions that don't serve you versus wishes that you want granted that not only serve you, but that serves uh, the majority of people in or around your life, okay? <clears throat> that that serves the whole okay so i digress let's get back to your reading we have justice and the queen of wands in the center of your reading you i feel like pile number fours um you're mastering the art of balance as well as action taking right <clears throat> excuse me so in regards to that with the justice card and the queen of wands i feel like you have mastered to a certain degree putting yourself first right and that is simultaneously synonymous with creating that balance that you need right cutting through the illusion that by putting yourself first you are you are a bad person or you are a selfish person that's the illusion that you have cut through and within cutting with uh, yeah, within cutting through that illusion, you're creating a more balanced approach, meaning you're taking care of yourself first, you're ta taking care of your obligations first, and then um, the amount of energy that you have left over, you, you know, take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of your spouse, or, you know, whoever you prioritize aside from God and yourself, right? that's what's going on right now you're you're also seeming to have a very heightened intuition that's telling you to do this more and more and more because it's working in your favor it's working out you're using good judgment and discernment when you know intrinsically that you have to fill your cup up you have to put yourself in the forefront of your existence in order to help the people around you okay if you are depleted, you cannot satiate everyone else's needs, let alone your own, right? So again, also, I do want to point out, we have the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Wands at two op uh, opposites of uh, the spectrum here. And you're, you are aligning with not only imagining the life that you want not only having found clarity in the life that you want and you are uh slowly but surely or you might not even be slowly but surely this could be happening quick you are making progress towards that because you're taking action it's the balance of creating it in the mind and, uh, and letting form follow right it coming to form letting that uh take place after you have created it in the mind and I have a feeling that that message came out in another pile as well. So I don't remember the pile, but if y'all felt compelled between two piles, I would definitely go check out uh, the pile that you were thinking about also. Just a suggestion, you definitely don't have to. So again, going to, uh, back to the beginning of your reading with the star card and the ace of swords, you are very clear on your directive and when where it is you're going right you're very clear on that i feel like you're very clear on the amount of healing per day that you've needed to sustain your energy levels pile number four and uh because you have been given that clarity almost like god spirit source energy has just endowed you with 
that clarity and that feeling state, you're taking action, not just to, um, not just to, uh, pour into yourself, but also to pour into others. Okay. But you know where you're going and you know where you're headed. And it's almost like you have this clear, concise attitude that you know that it's only a matter of time before you reach the stars, so to speak, right? <laughs> before you reach that destined, destined goal of yours, right? With the four of wands and the king of wands, um, there could be a fire sign, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, looking to commit, okay? Looking to want to join forces with you as it pertains to uh, marriage. It could be that. That could be on your mind right now. But I'm also sensing pile number four if this isn't about, a, you know, uh, commitment with another person. This is committing to yourself and to your goals so you could finally achieve that freedom that you've been looking for, okay? You're taking massive action and you have, to a certain degree, mastered, uh, right? Because the kings of the tarot talk about wisdom and mastery. So you have mastered to a certain degree of a type of freedom that you that you seek for yourself, okay? A type, uh, whether this be financial freedom, whether this just be freedom in any capacity that you seek, you are gaining momentum towards that pile number four. You could, and look, pile number four, the four of wands, like, psh, come on. Um, you could also be um, seeing 1111 a lot. And that's also a, a key indication, right? It's a sign. It is a signpost that you are on the right track and you're getting closer and closer to manifesting your, your desires, okay? to being in the celebratory goal, uh, to being in the celebratory energy, okay? So with the seven of cups and the moon, again, illusion, okay? I feel like you have experienced a lot of illusions in the past, whether good or, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, and you are cutting through that. You're cutting through that right now, okay? This could have been a just a momentary time of illusion or it could have happened for a while. Um, also, if it's not that, maybe you're just not seeing exactly just right now, but you will be soon, you will be seeing, um, your dreams just manifest before your eyes. But I think that's because of the priority that you have placed on cutting through the muck, cutting through the illusion and, um, really being able to call on God, call on spirit, call on source energy. When you need that extra push, when you need that extra encouragement, okay, that you can't even get from yourself because you can't, you can't see it clearly, right? So with the 10 of wands and the ace of wands, I feel like you're being brought back into the inspired action to put in the work, to put in the dedication that it takes. There is this basketball name, uh, there's this basketball player by the name of Kevin Durant that says hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. And I think that's really true. We can do, have, or be anything we want in this life um, if we are willing to put the effort into it. And I don't just mean physical effort. If we want to live a more balanced, harmonious life, it has to be not just the physical, but the mental, the spiritual, the emotional, you know what I'm saying? All of those things in one. And I feel like you are taking inspired action definitely towards your goals. Okay. Because you're being compelled to, you feel passionate about what you want. So you don't mind working hard. It's, it's almost not like hard work for you because it's something that you enjoy doing. Yeah. It might be, tedious at times, but I don't feel like it's hard work for you. I feel like it's just something that you enjoy doing. So once you're in the flow, you're there. That's all you need, you know, but let's pull some more cards. Pile number fours. Thank you, God. Thank you, spirit for blessing. Pile number fours for giving us clear, concise, accurate messages. Uh, the life lessons that they're currently mastering spirit. Tell us more. Pile number four is life lessons that they're currently mastering. You're definitely mastering the art of balance, okay? 
we have card number 14 patience i love this energy i love this energy for you pile number fours we have card number five emotional loss i want to pull one more card tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages clear concise accurate messages for our pile number four what life lessons are they currently mastering spirit Clear, concise, accurate messages through this um, for our pile number fours. Okay, so look, look, these are the cards that fell out. Card number 11, balance, okay? And then we have card number eight, trapped in fear. So what I'm getting is that you have really mastered the art of patience as well. Patience was with yourself, patience with, were with others. Where have in the past pile number fours, I feel like maybe you were almost the one to be a little off the handles or to not be able to calm or cool those fires when something urgent happened or something happened you weren't really the best at crisis management but i feel like because of whatever you've been doing that's been a daily thing whether that's meditation whether that's walking whether that's journaling whether that's reading you have mastered the art of balance through um repetitiveness and repetitiveness that has worked for you time and time and time again and i feel like you have also you have mastered a couple things you have mastered the art of crisis management I feel like you used to, you could have been, or some people take take it as it resonates, pile number four, but maybe some people would feel this eight of swords when crises would happen or when things just wasn't always peachy keen. They wouldn't know what to do. They would just feel stuck or like just completely just like out of, like they felt like everything was out of control. But what I've coming to realize is that more and more as you maybe mature as maybe you age you tend to understand that life is very cyclic and things happen and and life is beautiful but life also has trials and tribulations that test us uh it's like an endurance test right it tests us to sharpen ourselves to sharpen our minds to sharpen our response our responses to certain things right and that's what i'm feeling like you've been you've been sharpened right so let's pull some more cards <clears throat> thank you god thank you spirit clear concise accurate messages for our pile number fours what life lessons are they currently mastering right now at this time spirit clear concise accurate messages oh how could i forget to mention this i want to move these cards real quick so i could show y'all we have divine counterparts here so what this could mean pile number fours is maybe y'all could be getting married soon okay because with the king of wands queen of wands the four of wands and then justice this whole section here screams marriage commitment maybe to a divine counterpart like attracts like so to speak right however however you've you could have also integrated the masculine aspect of action taking and the feminine aspect of action taking right which is receiving you know that's the action that we need to take uh when we're in our feminine energy is to receive and i know it sounds counterintuitive like but wait, how do you take action in receiving? By being willing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? By the act of receiving in and of itself, okay? So I just feel like you're becoming more, it's either you're, you're finding this divine counterpart in which you will be committing to them. Maybe it's not through actual marriage, even though it does seem that way just with, you know, this spread here, just these four cards but it could also be through just the integration of um the masculine and the feminine principle of taking action right but i i don't know pile number four is i do see some of y'all might be getting married proposed to celebrating with a, a, another half 
so to speak. So I, I did want to mention that before we moved on with this reading. And this could apply for some, obviously not every single person, as these are genuine readings, my loves. But okay, I digress. Let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for blessing pile number fours, for giving us clear, concise, accurate messages. Tell us more, Spirit. What life lesson? <laughs> what life lesson is pile number four currently mastering right now? Ooh, okay. Manifested. Boom. Okay. Definitely pile number four. Definitely pile number four. Please check out another pile pile if you felt compelled because I feel like this is almost a continuation or it's it's the same message, so to speak. Okay. We have trust your gut. One more card. Clear, concise, accurate messages, spirit. For our pile number fours. What life lesson are they currently manifest? Are they currently mastering? Thank you. And we have go with the flow. I love it. I love it. Bottom of the deck, let loose. Okay, so you're about to let loose. You're about to celebrate something. And it could be this manifestation coming in. Maybe you're manifesting marriage or commitment, higher levels of commitment, power number four. But I feel like your intuition has been telling you something. Your intuition has been telling you exactly what to do, the exact action steps to take in order to manifest your dreams into reality or your goals into reality. And I feel like you're going with it. You're going with the flow of the universe. You're going with the flow of your intuition, your gut instinct, right? In order to manifest this, this beautiful life that you, you see for yourself, right? So let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. What? Life lessons are pile number four currently mastering. Thank you. I love this pile number fours. We have card number 36th house with routine. Yeah. I feel like your your intuition, your gut, whatever you want to call it, um, has been telling you get a routine, automate that routine. And once you automate that routine, boom, you're in the flow with life now. You don't have to make last minute adjustments because you have structured your life to where things are on are on automate. Oh my goodness, are automated. You have structured your life to the point where the things that shouldn't be taking up your mental bandwidth aren't. That's what I'm trying to say. You're coming up with a plan, a routine to structure your life more. So by doing that, it will allow more creativity to flow, more imagination, more inspiration to take precedent. If, if I'm saying that right, is it precedent? 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 To take... <laughs> To be at the forefront of your mind instead of like minutia, right? Tell us more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. What current life lessons are they mastering? And I feel like you're you're mastering this life lesson because I feel like maybe you are the type to be more fluid with your routine, but you realize through having one in the past that it just works. They work, you know, the routines work, having a routine works, having systems in, 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 in um, congruence with what you're doing, it just works, right? This card just fell out, card number 29, fifth house creativity. What were we just talking about? Allowing creativity or inspiration to take precedent over, you know, the things that really should just be automated, that really the things that you should just be doing innately, maybe even in the beginning of your day, so you can have the rest of your day to be more creative, to be more fun, to be more open, to, you know, have those inspired actions uh, translate. And it's card number 29 and card number 30, which I think is really synchronistic. Okay, tell us more, Spirit. Okay, so this, these two cards just fell out. We have card number 49, Jupiter Returns Benefits. This is very beneficial to you. And as long as you take action 
routinely, so that means every day or at least often enough, right? Uh, your creativity is going to benefit from this. Yeah, your creativity is going to benefit from this. And you're going to be seeing more and more and more benefits as uh, the days progress. We also have card number 31, seventh house partners. This could be something to do with partnership or marriage or commitment. And maybe you're seeing more value in that than you ever have before because you feel like two heads are better than one. Or, you know, maybe you just, maybe you know that, you know, partnership is just, important now more than ever okay we have at the bottom of the deck card number 33 ninth house faith and that's beautiful i feel like you're starting to have more faith in what you can do and what you can accomplish and you 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 have this firm knowing pile number four that you will be able to attain the life of your dreams it's not the matter of if or when okay Tell me more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number four spirit. What life lessons are pile number fours currently mastering? Clear, concise, accurate messages. What life lessons are pile number fours currently mastering? We have spells alchemy, okay? So you are understanding more and more your thoughts and your words turn into things. I feel like you are being very conscientious of the words that you are saying, the words that are coming out of your mouth, so to speak, because you know how powerful you are as a manifester and how powerful once spoken out of your mouth, these words become, it's almost like you're seeing things rapidly manifest almost as soon as you speak them, even before speaking them, pile number four is as soon as you think them oftentimes, right? We have Oracle wisdom. You have a lot of wisdom inside of you. You have a lot of power inside of you and you have, um, this inner guidance that is really guiding you to success right now. Like, really giving you that Midas touch. So always follow your intuition, what God's spirit source energy is telling you, even um, more so than you would go and look, you know, for maybe suggestions or guidance from others. I feel like your the oracle within you, that's all you really need right now in this moment, pile number four, is trust in yourself. Trust in what you have been thinking because it's it's for you. And look at these worlds. Like, I got to point this out. Look at these worlds. Like, your life is manifesting like magical S-H-I-T. <laughs> is, the stuff is happening right now magical stuff is happening right now you're probably like what is going on what is happening in in a good way because it's just like it's surreal it's like what tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages thank you oh my goodness look at this we have fortune cookie for two it is child blue pile number fours this is one of the best cards in this deck you know what i just love to reiterate things so i'm going to read this because i feel like repetition creates lets things stick in our minds and you know this message who wouldn't want to hear this message on a daily basis if possible right so it says fortune cookie fortuitous something that has been hidden from you is now ready to be revealed and it's rather wonderful Good fortune is yours for the taking. Be on the lookout for the unexpected. Synchronicity is key. This is your moment, so don't be shy to show your achievements to the world. Be proud of your success and release any worries about what others may think. You could be their inspiration. This message marks a good omen for all involved, so enjoy every moment knowing you are totally blessed and will continue to be so as you put your all into everything you do. It says incantation, fortune comes in a disguise, so look about with lucky eyes, a rare occurrence, strangers speak. 
points towards a lucky streak. It says other divinatory meanings, a surprise is on its way. A big win is at your fingertips. You have the Midas touch right now. Oh my goodness. A chance meeting answers questions. A great offer will be made. Notice synchronistic occurrences. Help is at hand. This is your lucky break. Wow. Pile number four. What a message. What a message. And I want to show you what's at the bottom of the deck. We have flowers fickle. And I think this might have something to do with someone in your life, maybe a partner, maybe a friendship, but someone that maybe you were maybe a little confused about. This could be an offer from them. Okay. If something, something's going on, I'm, this could be an offer from someone romantically you're involved with or non-romantically, it doesn't really matter, but this could be an offer from a, a, some type of partnership in your life, right? That's really what I'm trying to say. So let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Tell us more. Pile number fours. For pile number fours, what are our pile number four, fours currently mastering in their life? What life lessons are pile number fours woo, currently mastering in their life? We have the star born. You're a star, baby. You're a star, pile number fours. Collect your winnings. You're birthing something into fruition right now. And this is your dreams. This is all the things that you have imagined for yourself. You are now currently becoming, my dears. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Tell us more, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages. Ooh, look, the forest. This is where you've been. This is where you've been, and this is who you're becoming. This is who you are. You're experiencing some type of breakthrough right now. One more card, spirit. What life lessons are pile number four is currently mastering the offering Ooh, child what is coming up someone is someone i don't know if someone's about to come in and offer you something if some of y'all are about to be proposed to if you have given your life to if you have rendered your life to a, a or okay let me rephrase this if you have made it your mission to be of service to others, you are being blessed tenfold now, pile number fours. You're being given something, this gift, this, this, you know, sense of imagination that's going to take you very far. It's a gift. And maybe this was something that you had offered during the new moon. Because look at these moons, okay? These, the crescent moon. Maybe it's something that has taken time to manifest. And maybe it was something, some type of intentions, right, that you've set during a new moon. And we have a full moon in Capricorn, if I'm not mistaken, on the 16th or the 13th. It's coming up, okay? So it's either on the 13th or the 16th. Don't quote me, but um, it's coming up soon. So maybe by the time this full moon hits, you're going to see clearly what what's being offered to you at this time with God's spirit source energy, so, source energy. We could say that with God's spirit source energy uh, wants you to to see right now. And this is you being broken open in the best way possible. This is your childhood dreams coming into fruition. This is you being that star, that center of attention, but not in a bad way, just in like, you've been doing so amazing that, you know, it's time for you to be recognized and rewarded for a, what you've endured and how you've endured it, if that makes sense. So let's pull one last card for advice and guidance from God, spirit, source, energy. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Uh, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. What message would you like to leave with our pile number fours? Any advice, guidance, or insight to conclude pile number fours reading, Spirit? What light about their life lessons being mastered at this time? Guidance, advice, the arts, Sara Sabati. 
express yourself through creative activities look we have creativity twice with the fifth house creativity card and sara savati sara savati yeah that's how you say it okay so something is about to get your creative juices flowing pile number fours and it's about to make all the difference in your world it's about to make all the difference in your world we have at the bottom of the deck era cura blossoming you are just getting started so have patience with yourself in the process and do not give up yeah i feel like you're on to something and you're just getting started to whatever it is that you have been called to do this could be through a creative expression the arts singing dancing writing okay let's see let's read sarah vasati's message and then we're going to conclude your reading pile number fours so we have Sarah Vasati with the arts. It says, express yourself through creative activities. Message from Sarah Vasati. You're a limitless being. If it seems that you have time or if, if you if it see if it seems that you have time, money, or other restrictions, it's simply because your mind is focused upon the material world. You can unlimit yourself by lifting the cloak of the material world from your focus music is essential for the expression of non-material ideas and energies music colors our surroundings with emanations from the highest vibrational fields it allows us to escape all limitations in our thinking and very existence surround yourself in music and allow it to stimulate your own creativity your own creative thinking and to spark new ideas flow with the music and give yourself permission to investigate and experiment with putting your creative ideas into action enjoy being limitless wow so this is ultimately saying that you're a limitless being do what makes your heart flutter do the creative um imaginings that you, that god spirit source energy is sending out to you right now because god spirit source energy is sending these out to you by by way of your imagination for a reason it's they're like they could be million dollar ideas that you're getting and if you don't take action how will you ever know you know so it says various meanings of this card play music sing dance draw paint write or do something creative it says study or change to a career that gives you creative freedom i love that take a creative class invest in an artistic hobby keep a journal of your creative ideas join a writing club or other creative support systems it says about sara savati Sara Savati, yeah. The Hindu goddess of the arts, Sara Savati helps us with all creative expressions such as writing, music, dancing, and eloquent speaking. The wife of Brahma, Sara Savati, prizes knowledge and creative expression above material possessions. Her symbols include a white swan, the Veena musical instrument, and a book of knowledge. She helps us focus our minds on our creative projects and not get distracted or procrastinate. I love that. And even with that routine card pile number fours, that just means, like we said prior, uh, kicking up your routine to being more optimized is going to help your, cre your creativity and your creative juices to start flowing more succinctly for you so you can be able to take action when you have those great creative ideas or those creative sparks they won't just fizzle out you'll be able to endure them into uh until you reach your your destination or your goal right so yes my lovely dreamy dreamers pile number four amazing reading um i love you all so much i hope this reading resonated with you if this reading did resonate it if this reading did resonate with you, please give this reading a big thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe, share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone else who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much, and until next time, I will see you in our next reading. Bye.